Okay, good evening. Uh, in this video, I want to quickly, in a very brief but very concise way, I want to discuss all the important things that have been discussed in the chapter on media. Okay, so uh, please remember that media is divided into three major parts. The first is the distinction between old and new media and, and ownership and control of media. That's the first thing. The second part is how various groups are represented in the media. Now there are 11 groups that are represented in the media and they are all in your course. So that is the second part. The third part is the concluding part and it is related to uh, the post-modernist view of media. All right. So these are the three things. First divide it in your mind that this is the way uh, the things are organized and then study accordingly okay so what i will do is uh, first let me start with old media and new media now what is old media old media uh, includes uh, your um, uh, television your radio your newspapers in which there was a production and the receiving of the information and the receiving of the content new media is is the coming of the internet and all the things that are related to it here the receiver of the information can also be the creator of the information. So that happens in new media. You receive a message on WhatsApp, you're the consumer of the message. You forward the same message, you become the promoter of that message. So, so this is the distinction between old and new media. Quickly now let's come to uh, the concept of ownership and control but before that there is a certain concept which is in your book and which is in your course and which is very important which is called global conglomeration okay what does global conglomeration mean global conglomeration means that on a world scale companies are now operating like transnational companies like multinational transnational companies that operate in various parts of the world and offer their services to a global audience so that is, uh, that is one development in the world of media. So now let's come to ownership and control of the media. Num number one, the first thing you have to remember is that this is ownership and control of media houses today is a very complex thing. Why is it complex? Because it is identified by two main characteristics. One, there is horizontal integration. Okay, what does horizontal integration means? One media house becomes uh, merges with another media house at the same level of production. America Online merges with uh, Warner Company. Uh, uh, American Online and Warner Company they they merge and they become one. This is horizontal integration. Companies at the same level are coming together and they are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Also, there is vertical integration. What do you mean by vertical integration? One company wants to take control of the whole production process. So what does it do? It takes control of production of uh, uh, the media content and it also takes control of the distribution of the media content. All right. So let me just uh, show this to you. So let me let me just show this to you. Um, Okay, so this is what I want to show to you. Alright, these are some of the important points which I believe you should have in mind when you are approaching this chapter. Okay, so please remember that ownership and control is a complex issue. There is horizontal integration and there is uh, vertical integration. Why? Because the movie makers want to take control of the distribution of the movies as well. This creates, uh, this creates another phenomenon which is called diversification. Okay, media houses have become enormously diversified. What do you mean by diversified? When you have different products to offer to different markets. The classic example is Virgin. Virgin uh, is not just in media, it is uh, very much in, into media, but it is also into a lot of other services that are apparently extremely unconnected with media 
what does diversification lead to it leads to what are called synergies what is synergies synergy means when there is a uh, uh, interaction and cooperation between two organizations in such a way that overall profitability of the company or of the group of companies is a lot more than if the two companies were to operate separately for example if virgin air and virgin media were to operate separately their profits will be let's say 1 million dollar but now that they are part of the same company and they are using the the management techniques that are the best as determined by mr branson then their profits are a lot more than 1 million dollar i mean 1 million is just a hypothetical figure uh, a lot more than 1 million maybe 10 million dollars all right so uh, please keep in mind that the modern trends are leading to diversification which are then leading to synergies and ex- enormously high profits for the media houses okay uh, all these things then leads to another phenomenon which in in your course is called technological convergence this is another trend okay what is technological convergence technological convergence convergence means use of or uh, availing a lot of different technologies okay uh, in in the uh, uh, to create um, uh, the media product okay in order to create the media product you use a lot of different technologies you will use uh, 3d you will use mp4 you will use uh, satellite technology now these are various technologies okay this is not one technology you, uh, producing a film using a camera is one thing transmitting the film using satellite is something completely different but all these technologies are used to create better and better media products think about the world cup that is taking place think about the technology the technology that is being used is not just related to filming it's also related to transmission of those images using things like uplink and the other uh, things that are used so this is technological convergence now let's come to the theories of ownership what are the theory we have seen ownership and control of media but there are two main theories related to uh, ownership and control of media the first is called the pluralist theory all right the pluralist theory of media ownership please very uh, very briefly keep in mind what this is there are different types of consumers in a particular country or in a particular region okay these consumers have the real power because they will buy the product that is being made okay so the media houses have to supply the audience with uh, whatever is being demanded different types of people in a region are demanding something so we have to provide that thing that the uh, 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 that the audience wants to view so according to the pluralist theory the owner doesn't decide what is transmitted it is the people the buyer they have the real powers and that brings us to another concept which is called public service broadcasting public service broadcasting is a method of broad- broadcasting the news which which will be generally accepted to the whole population just look at your own country in your own country there are different types of people so the news will be transmitted in such a way why is cnn such a popular channel in the united states because it transmits news in a way that every section in american society accepts it why is fox not like that because fox uh targets only a certain part of the american population and they transmit the news in a certain way which is not acceptable to everybody so so public service broadcasting is an outcome of the pluralist theory and it says that uh it is the consumer of the news which has the real power not the owner of the media houses but the marxists as always they have a different <coughs> point of view and they will say that uh, media uh, is there to legitimize a system of inequality that has been created by the capitalists and this is this is done by reinforcing the power culture of the 
capitalist class all right uh, media does not highlight the inequalities uh, that uh, that exists in a certain society so uh, so so miliband is the theorist and he says uh, he says no no the the the, the media are there only uh, to show a very rosy picture of the capitalist societies critics of this point of view say there is no evidence to support this there's no evidence to support that the government and the media are brainwashing the the public all right but um uh, 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 kuren is a theorist all right who becomes like a, a nemesis to both the pluralists and the marxists so pluralists are saying that uh, the things are being transmitted for the general population right marxists are saying no they are being transmitted in the interest of the ruling class to reinforce the inequalities in society but kuren now comes up with a completely different point of view he rejects the pluralists as well as the marx what does he say he says it is it is wrong that owners do not intervene in the media content is determined by the media remember the pluralists the pluralists were saying that it is the people whose demands were determining kuren says no the pluralists are wrong there and the media owners are in fact determining the content but then kuren does not accept the marxist point of view okay uh, he says these people are intervening the owners are intervening yes he agrees with that but the motive is not to um, uh, reinforce the culture of the of a particular class remember the marxists will always talk about the class so the motive of the owner is not to reinforce the power of uh, the ruling class but the motive is to pursue a profit okay he says that this motive is not a class motive it is an individual motive the owner of the uh, the, the the owner of uh, cnn for example is not promoting the interest of any class he wants his own profit it's individual obje objective all right so they want to uh, cnn wants a bigger share so they are uh, they are reporting news so that uh, they can take the market share from fox news for example here there's a there's a there's a research group which is called the glasgow university media group okay uh, and they say that this does not uh, uh, the the content does not support the interests of those who run the capitalist system all right but in most countries the media takes a middle view all right why do they take the middle view they take the middle view because they are profit making enterprises they do not want to offend any particular section of society now fox news for example in america offends everybody except the right except the right wingers all right so so they say that in this situation uh, if you offend if there are 10 types of people in your country you offend nine of them and you make news only for for one part of the population that way the remaining nine uh, groups of people are going to reject your channel and your channel will not remain pro profitable so they say that they take the middle course because they do not want people to reject their channel they do not want a culture of negativity all right they do not want a culture of negativity they want people to take the middle course and those journalists who do not take the middle course who write Uh, things which appeal to only one section of the population those people are called the extremist writers and these extremist writers will be boycotted by them and they will not become part of the mainstream media all right so this then takes us to another very important point how is the agenda for the news or the agenda for the media set okay uh, so what 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 is the agenda and how is this agenda determine so uh, so of course um, it is these companies uh, that set the agenda all right and because we are now very concerned with taking the middle path and and over the years people have become more the populations 
within countries have also become more extreme in the positions that they are taking. So what are the media doing now? So a research was carried out by Barnett and Weimar and they said that in the 1970s and in the 1980s, a lot more programs were aired which were related to documentaries and political opinions. Today, if you look at the media, there are a lot of dramas, there are a lot of talk, uh, there are a lot of uh, game shows and there are a lot of um, entertainment item. And why are these entertainment um, things, uh, entertainment programs more than, uh, than uh, controversial documentaries? Because the soap opera or the game show offends no one. It's, it's, a, it's the middle path. No one is offended when you watch this and the media houses continue to make profits. Okay, so, so the, this consensus development then is media setting. And what do you see in these game shows? What do you see in these programs? A lot of, um, a lo a, a lot of uh, luxury lifestyle, a lot of entertainment, a lot of happiness. These are the values of capitalism. So the, cap the values of capitalism like wealth are being promoted because everyone wants a middle path. No one wants to offend nobody else. So that, is, uh, uh, so that is the reason why these capitalist values get promoted. The idea is not that the companies are genuinely trying to uh, brainwash people. It's just happening because they do not want to offend anybody and they want to take a middle, middle path. Okay. So now we come to the next part of this chapter, which is related to the representation of different groups. Now, what are the groups that are represented in the media? In England, monarchy is represented upper class, middle class, working class, representation of age, childhood, youth, elderly, ethnic minorities, people with disabilities and gender. They are all represented in the British media. So we'll quickly go through them. How is the monarchy represented in England? According to Nan, uh, media shows a it, it, it tries to portray the monarchy in a very positive light. These things have, uh, uh, re uh, have reduced after the death of Lady Diana. But before that, every aspect of a royal's life was reported in the media. All right. So, so they, uh, they, uh, they, there was an obsession with reporting the lives of people related to the monarchy. Lady Diana was the most extensively photographed person in the history of the world because the media were, were always reporting what the monarchy was, uh, what was happening in and around the monarchy. The second is the wealthy class. Then here you have Newman. Uh, he argues that the wealthy class is very positively portrayed in the media generally. All right. So that, that is, it's a positive representation. What about the middle class? The middle class are overrepresented in TV dramas and comedy situations. They are not represented in, um, in, in uh, programs that show power or, uh, you know, something serious, a serious contribution. They, they are there for the entertainment value. Then how is the working class represented? The working class is generally labeled as the problem class. They are not considered very reasonable. Okay. In fact, in some media, they are portrayed as the unreasonable people who make trouble for their reasonable employers. Okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, the media assumes that these working classes are not interested in any serious analysis of social problems. They are just concerned with trivial things like uh, uh, making, uh, earning a high wage or things like that not into the serious business of uh, contributing to society. How is age represented? Uh, the, uh, let's start with children. Children are variously represented as, see media here is interested in making its product sell. So in, in, in order to sell the product, they will variously represent children as being cute, as being problematic, as being uh, victims. Okay, but overall, uh, studies show that they are shown in a positive light. How are youth uh, represented? Youth are represented in 
two ways number one they are the promoters of lifestyle okay i remember that that, that uh, in the early 1990s um don ran an article saying young people now want to wear jeans rather than dress pants okay so so what was happening the jeans were coming into fashion this was the 1990s i also remember early 1980s when wrangler came in and um, the young people were shown wear, wearing jeans and uh, you know uh, um, cowboy style uh, clothes so young people are used to promote a certain lifestyle but in the media the second way of representing young people is they are problematic it is they who are related with crime and drugs and stuff like that the next is representation of the elderly again upper class and middle class elderly people are often shown uh, in positions of power like judges and politicians but they can also be shown as mentally challenged dependent on others burden on others how are minorities shown please remember from now on all the uh, all, all the representations are based on stereotypes okay the minorities are stereotyped the blacks are often shown as carriers of aids and diseases okay uh, um, uh, uh, african people uh, are dependent people they uh, they 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 come uh, to the to the western countries and they become dependent on others they are they are not very good at contributing uh, minorities are also shown as abnormal uh, why do muslim women take the hijab that's created that is uh, shown as abnormal in many shows not directly but it can be done subtly okay and in many um, movies and in many shows uh, uh, there is that there, there is a phenomenon of what is called tokenism what does tokenism mean that there is token representation i introduce a black person in my drama because i have to because i have to recognize that maybe there he doesn't have a role in the play he's just introduced as a person who who is a uh, who's an who's a nurse or who is a waiter uh, otherwise he doesn't have a role okay so then we go to people with disabilities people with with disabilities are also shown in various ways um objects of pity objects of burden objects uh, that have been victimized villain and abnormal how do the mean a media represent gender all right so please remember up till up till now there was stereotyping uh, when we were talking about the blacks when we were talking about people with disabilities when we were talking about pe- minorities there were there was stereotyping only in the case of gender there is not just stereotyping but the media also provides gender role models which when you are stereotyping you are describing the person a woman is like this but when you are saying the gender gender role should be this this is a prescription you are saying women should be like this so this is this is a major uh, difference uh, in fact an addition so how how are women represented uh, there are a narrow range of roles uh, that that uh, are reserved for women in the media uh men carry out um a range of roles women carry out a very small um focused kind of work in in the media domestic work mainly consumer mainly working women are trivialized and then there is what is called symbolic annihilation symbolic annihilation means that deliberately women's achievements are not reported they are they are anal- annihilated a uh, gill says that no these days uh, women are also shown as being empowered all right uh, but of course this is an opposing point of view how are men uh, represented in the media men are represented uh, as energetic strong um, and uh, aggressive However in the 1980s a new kind of male was introduced and he was known as the metrosexual male okay now this this male uh was not just very ag- uh, was not just aggressive and related to strength but uh, he also championed values of caring so he was more open uh, to the feminine side or the soft side okay so now how does the media affect uh the audience there are four theories there are four ways in which the media affects 
the audience number one hypodermic syringe model number two two-step flow model number three cultural effect model and number four gratification and users model so let's look at media uh, uh, media hype hypodermic syringe model uh, this view says that the media injects ideologies into the minds of the people directly just like a hypodermic syringe the two-step model says that what uh, this this putting of ideology in people's heads is not a direct process it's not in directly like a hypodermic syringe so uh, what happens here that in every society there are certain uh, influential people they are called opinion leaders so the media targets these opinion leaders they watch the news or they and they watch the the media and get influenced by it and then they tell their followers and people in their groups how they should behave so this is a two step model the first the leaders get affected and then they uh, change the way of thinking of the people in their group the third is the cultural effect model all right this is uh, the, this this can also be called the drip 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 model the drip 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 model means that the impact of the media on the audience is not immediate but when you keep watching something over a long period of time then oh, then your way of thinking definitely changes and this is what the marxist used to say that the capitalist they keep feeding people with a certain kind of propaganda over the years and over decades and ultimately people become like them lastly there is the uses and gratification model uses and gratification means that here the uh, the, uh, the the audience is not passive in fact this is an active audience they are seeking uh, entertainment or they are seeking relaxation and they are deliberately choosing what they will watch and if they don't like something that they are going to change the channel they are going to surf and this again supports what the pluralists had said before that uh, you know we uh, uh, the, it's the consumer who is very important okay so now let's finally uh, in the final section let's talk about the post modernist model because because that is the model which is uh, most relevant to media these days especially with the advent of the new media they say that uh, the post modernists say that media shapes it does not reflect it actually shapes identities and lifestyle it does not promote objects it promotes brands logos and labels and uh, this is a reinforcement of the consumer perspective which you remember in the family also we said that the modern family is not just a producer but a consumer so they they are reinforcing the same consumption model uh the 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 going of the media across international borders does not mean that people are necessarily becoming close it may also mean that there is a lot of stress and especially cohen's study uh, of the media uh, concentrated on how they create moral panic uh, how they uh, uh, sort of stigmatize a certain group of people and then by amplification of deviance which means they they constantly reinforce that this particular group of people is a problem in society uh, people force that group to act in a certain way which again gives the impression that they are uh, a problem to society and thereby it creates so what is thompson and what, what is thompson saying and what is cohen saying thompson is saying media is creating hostilities internationally cohen is saying it is creating international uh, um, tension and um, you know problems nationally within within the country so uh, so hall who is a marxist he says that these moral panics also create i uh, also are serving an ideological function for example all blacks are muggers so th- this is an ideological function which is which is saying that you are uh, if you belong to a certain group then you have a certain characteristic but now we have the realists and they are called the left realists and they say that it is dangerous to dismiss what the media is saying as a creation of moral panic they say uh, no if the media is saying someone is bad and there there is a problem don't dismiss it this is news it might have a basis in reality 
so the media are not creating villains it's identifying them so this is basically uh, in, a, in a very small in a nutshell what the uh, chapter of media is about i will uh, uh, quickly uh, talk about the theorists that you should keep in mind here okay in a very brief summary form bagdikian 2004 says the media ownership is concentrated in seven families curen talks about the press barons whenever you will come across the word curen you will you will always think about the press barons uh, and and there's another word that will come to your mind propaganda curen says that there are certain uh, people who control companies uh, and these companies then create propaganda in the world doyle uh, uh, doyle suggests uh, that it is important to study ownership and control patterns miliband who gave his theory in 1973 uh, is a marxist so he is going to look at everything from the class point of view he argues that the role of the media is to shape how we think so basically he comes up, comes up with that ideology and that control perspective then there are tunstall and palmer they suggest that governments are no longer interested in controlling activities of the media because they need support of the media to remain in power barnett and weimer uh, they say that uh, decisions ha had a negative cultural impact in the sense that education information and news have been increasingly sidelined Nairn, I, to, I told you about him, uh, he studied the coverage of the monarchy. So basically, um, he, he has said that the monarchy is positively covered by the, new, uh, by the media these days. Newman um, studied the wealthy people and how the media deals with the wealthy people and he says that they are positively represented. Curran and Sater, um, they studied the working class interaction of the media with the working class uh, Wayne conducted content analysis um, on, on young people on how media represented the young people uh, Newman again uh, studied the classes then there's Akinti he argued that television coverage basically Akinti is related with ethnic minorities and it was he who said that uh, the media links the, uh, certain blacks with certain diseases Wenjik found that black people, particularly uh, the African Caribbeans, tend to be portrayed as criminals. Then there's Watson. He wrote about moral panics. Barnes, uh, he studied disabilities. Almy, he uh, represented, he studied the genders. Uh, Tunstall, um, um, he basically spoke about the emphasis of uh,